My friends, we find ourselves at a pivotal juncture regarding the financial well-being of our nation. The projections unveiled by the Office of Management and Budget deliver a sobering reality check. We are careening towards a monumental $1.9 trillion federal deficit for this fiscal year. A chasm of such magnitude has seldom been witnessed beyond the gravest of crises that have historically rocked our nation's shores. This yawning gulf, amounting to a staggering 6.6% of our gross domestic product, has predictably become a tinderbox in the charged theater of election year politics. The partisan flames are being stoked, with Republicans decrying the unbridled spending agenda of the Democrats, while their counterparts counter that the true culprit lies in the Republican wrought tax cuts that have so severely drained the wellspring of government revenue. Yet, as is so often the case, the reality defies such facile characterizations peddled on the campaign trail. A deeper examination of the government's very own figures reveals a complexity that transcends the partisan fray. For while expenditures in discretionary domains like defense, education, and nutritional aid remain below long-term historical norms, a perfect storm is brewing from entitlement programs and interest on our towering national debt. The daunting $27.8 trillion debt burden we have amassed is exacting a punishing toll as interest rates have surged in the Federal Reserve's uphill battle against inflation scourge. With the average interest rate on Treasuries more than doubling since the Fed's campaign commenced in March 2022, net interest payments are projected to reach a staggering 3.2% of GDP this year, a depth not plumbed since 1991's fiscal annus horribilis. Because that debt is so significant, the dollars add up pretty quickly, and we don't have a cushion, laments Alex Brill of the American Enterprise Institute, echoing the concerns of fiscal hawks far and wide. But even this budgetary millstone pales in comparison to the tsunami of entitlement spending, the true behemoth lying in wait. For decades now, a perfect tempest has been gathering force, born of our graying demographics and the inexorable rise of healthcare costs. The Social Security Administration estimates a staggering 67 million Americans will be receiving benefits by 2024, a surge of over 8 million from just 2015. Couple this with the escalating expenditures on healthcare juggernauts like Medicare and Medicaid, set to reach 5.8% of GDP this year versus a 3.4% historical average, and you have a crisis of existential proportions looming over our nation's balance sheets. The causes are multifarious, the consequences dire, a litany of economists and sage policy voices have sounded the clarion call. Michael Farrelly of J.P. Morgan cautions that a failure to reign in the unfurling of the Trump-era tax cuts will only exacerbate the budgetary tsunami lying in wait over the coming decade. Harvard's Karen Dynan, an alumna of the hallowed corridors of the Treasury Department, echoes the refrain, We need to reduce the deficit, and if not, we're going to see harm to our economy. Her diagnosis is unsparing, a holistic strategy synthesizing both spending discipline and revenue augmentation must be brought to bear with alacrity. For those with the temerity to peer over the fiscal precipice, the vista is a grim one indeed. The nonpartisan arbiters at the Congressional Budget Office have sketched a $22.1 trillion negative reverie spanning the decade from 2025 to 2034, a kaleidoscope of compounding annual deficits stretching toward the horizon. No longer are these daunting projections the stuff of insular beltway parlor discourse. Our profligate ways have attracted the censure of the international community. The decidedly anodyne vernacular of the International Monetary Fund can scarcely mask the underlying opprobrium. In a June critique, the fund took the United States to task for running a deficit too large and warned of the concomitant risks posed to the global financial order. My friends, the stakes could scarcely be higher. Unchecked, the path we currently tread promises to constrain the resiliency of our economy and imperil our standing on the world stage for generations to come. The task is Herculean, but the remedy lies within our grasp a renewal of the traditional American virtues of fiscal prudence, deferred gratification, and sacrificing present indulgences for future prosperity. For far too long, we as a nation have engaged in the perilous budgetary equivalent of gorging ourselves into a tryptophan reverie, dismissive of tomorrow's inevitabilities. We have reveled in a surfeit of entitlements and low tax splendor while grimly forswearing any admission of the compounding interest charges accruing on our mounting stake in hock. The time has arrived for us to awaken from this dreamy interregnum of adversity deferral. To safeguard the robustness of our economy and uphold our duties to posterity, we must summon newfound reserves of stoicism, frugality, and farsightedness. The way forward will mandate political valor of the highest order, 
the willingness to accept some present austerities and revenue augmentations to undergird the nation's fortunes for decades to come. For those of feckless conviction, the cozy recourses of pedantic obfuscation may appear tempting. Pretending our budgetary quagmire can simply be ascribed to one party's out-of-control spending or the other's tax profligacy. But such sophistic distractions are the arena of the political knaves who ill-serve the republic's interests. No, the existential crisis looming over our national balance sheets demands a response commensurate with its gravity. A bipartisan reckoning, an honoring of the ethos that historically incubated American greatness. An unflinching realism uniting prudent elements across the partisan divide to accept the fiscal stabilizations and recalibrations that will inoculate us from a future of perpetual insolvency and global irrelevance. In the misty historical vignettes from my youth, I recall portraits of an America that subordinated myopic self-indulgence to enlightened sacrifice and deferral of gratification, erecting gleaming cities on the frontier, harnessing titanic industrial might, and shouldering the mega albatrosses of world wars and the Cold War struggle. An America animated by rugged self-reliance, enlightened restraint, and a sober sense of intergenerational responsibility. It is to this hallowed heritage that we as a nation must now attune ourselves. To falter in this existential undertaking is to forsake the Promethean legacy that has powered the American Leviathan since its inception. The hour is upon us to rekindle the smoldering embers of pragmatic, non-ideological governance in service of reclaiming fiscal sanity. The path will be arduous, the political calumny ferocious, but we profess to be the heirs of the intrepid flock who carved civilizations from the primordial unknown. Have we lost the unbridled audacity that spurred our ancestors to tame wildernesses and extinguish tyrannies? My friends, do not let cowardice or partisan mendacity imperil the grandest of all modern undertakings, the preservation and fortification of our nation's fiscal sinews against the inexorable ravages of imbalance and debt. The reckoning may be upon us, but our pedigree is one of bravery, prudence, and asceticism in service of perpetuating the American masthead for our posterity. It falls to us to slake this crucible and renew the eternal flame of fiscal sustainability, our sacred duty as temporary stewards of the American inheritance. Relent we dare not, for the costs of negligence and abdication would reverberate across generations untold. Let our efforts be worthy of the giants upon whose ramparts we now stand.